Matt says we're now streaming. Are you happy? Yep, ready to go. Okay. Thank you, uh, members, for uh, joining and officers uh, for joining this uh, meeting of the uh, Staffing Matters uh, and Review uh, Subcommittee. Uh, there are five uh, items on the agenda. Uh, and as per usual with these uh, remote meetings, when it comes to uh, votes, I'll go around each individual uh, member of the committee uh, to ask how you vote. So at that point, I'd ask if you're able to unmute yourselves. Um, we've got a couple of things um, that we need to get through in terms of uh, committee memberships and then also looking at um, the development of a waste plant in Basildon. And I've asked uh, for a report to come to this committee uh, from uh, Paul Brace on this, because as we know, there is a very, very short window uh, for this consultation that has been uh, foisted upon the people of Basildon during the middle of a global pandemic, uh, which we will come to uh, in a moment. But there are no apologies for absence. Agenda item one, this is a full house uh, of uh, sitting members. Uh, do I have any declarations of interest from members? Yes, from me. Councillor Smith. Member of Essex County Council. In relation to agenda item five. Thank you. Yeah. Any other members? No. Okay. In which case we come to the minutes of the uh, meeting held on the 28th of April, the last staff in matters. Are there any minute, any matters arising from members on this? In which case I'm going to go to a vote on the minutes. Can I ask Councillor Smith how you vote? In favour. Councillor Baggett. In favour. Councillor Blake. In favour. And I vote in favour. So the minutes are carried unanimously. Thank you, members. Uh, agenda item four uh, is uh, a change of membership of the Policy uh, and Resources uh, Committee. Uh, Scott, this is a report in your name. I don't know if you wish to say anything other than it's a relatively self-explanatory uh, re recommendation uh, asking for us to replace uh, Councillor Rimmer with Councillor Baggett on the Policy and Resources Committee. Uh, I will bring Mr Birkinshaw in in a moment and then I would also add that um, this agenda item is, is obviously the second of these sort of items that we've brought forward so when we go into a closed session at the end of this just to have a, an informal chat about what we want on the next agenda uh, I would like to talk about this further. Um, but Mr. Birkinshaw, I'll bring you in now to talk about this agenda item. Yeah, Chairman, as you say, a fairly straightforward report, a matter in, a set out in the legislation section upon which there's no discretion really for members. But I think there's two issues I do just want to pick up uh, with regards to it. Firstly, and I have obviously discussed with yourself and, and with other members around um, adding an additional recommendation just to seek delegated authority to myself in order to give effect to the wishes expressed by political groups going forward. I think we're in the position where uh, such requests where there is no discretion were then uh, obviously ordinarily reporting to full council, obviously reporting to staffing matters because of the uh, lack of full council meetings. It just seems appropriate that there's obviously a delay in that, there's issues that may arise, and I think uh, it would seem appropriate for officers to be able to give effect to them wishes immediately. And if that recommendation was to be supported, then I would uh, propose that a report be taken to each full council meeting as necessary, just to advise of any changes to membership. Um, it would just seem a pragmatic approach. So I would just like to add that recommendation for members to consider. I think the second issue, and I'd probably just um, see Councillor Baggett's uh, input really, because there is obviously was a policy and resources committee last week. Obviously that was uh, deferred and is taking place this evening. Uh, we had discussed last week, Councillor Baggett around membership for this evening's meeting. And therefore it may be that the recommendation um, it is better to take effect from tomorrow, uh, the change in membership, just to, I think, Councillor Baggett was suggesting, as Councillor Rimmer was the member last week, the meeting, he had the agenda, he's done all that, it would seem pragmatic again for Councillor Rimmer to be the member that attends this evening's meeting. I think Councillor Baggett's nodding in agreement with that, and, and therefore, if members are happy, I suggest that recommendations to change that the change in membership takes effect from tomorrow and therefore after this evening's Policy and Resources Committee. OK, I, I think it's important to just flesh out there from from what Paul is saying is that is you're talking about, um, in effect, lay members of the committee. 
Uh, so if if a group leader wanted to change uh, membership of a of a committee, then they express that to you as monitoring officer, and then the monitor you can give effect to it and let full council know uh, in a report going forward, rather than it coming as a report to either full council or to this meeting. Um, okay, I, I, I'll open that up to uh, members for uh, discussion. Do I have any member who wishes to speak? Council Baggett. Thank you. I, I had actually used the participants to raise my hand, but I guess that's, um, you, you, you didn't see that. I'll do that in future. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I mean, first of all, on Mr. Birkinshaw's recommendation, I think that is, is, is sensible. The idea that for whatever reason, if, if any uh, group leader wanted to, to make a change to a committee, that they've got to wait until there's a full council meeting uh, to do that uh, is a bit clunky, especially in, in this day and age. Uh, but also, just to confirm, yeah, I mean, Councillor, it's 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 a cosmetic change more, rather than anything else. Councillor Rimmer has put all the work in for tonight's agenda and everything else, and and I wouldn't want to see him sort of have, have put that work to, to to waste. He's been a very effective and very good member of that particular committee. Um, we're just making some some minor tweaks as far as we as a group are concerned so with effect from the 3rd of june would would be more sensible of course if, if we'd had the the meeting last week we would be having the the, the, the discussion it's purely because of the the fact the technology failed us last week okay any other member wish to speak on this no okay um in which case uh, the recommendations, there are two recommendations, the one which is set out in the report and then the second, uh, and we will agree a form of wording, but in essence, it is around delegating authority to the monitoring officer to give uh, effect to the wishes of uh, group leaders uh, as expressed around memberships of committees. Um, and as I said, I do wanna pick something up on this uh, afterwards for a potential uh, future meeting, but uh, for the purposes of this agenda item, they are the two recommendations. So I'm going to ask uh, each of you how you vote. I'm going to start with Councillor Baggett. Four on both. Councillor Blake. Four on both. Councillor Smith. Four on both. And I vote four on both. So the uh, recommendations are carried uh, unanimously. Uh, thank you, members. Thank you, uh, Paul. Um, the next uh, item is the uh, proposed development of a waste plant uh, in Basildon. Uh, and obviously uh, the consultation is only a three week initial con consultation with Clearway who are proposing to build this waste plant in the borough. Um, and so the council is looking to respond to that consultation. And I've asked uh, Paul to come and, and update members on uh, where we are uh, with that and what's our initial views on it. And then I think there's a, a debate to be had about uh, the procedures and how this council was informed uh, of the uh, development and the proposal or lack of uh, information that was forthcoming uh, but we can get into that afterwards so Paul I'm going to hand over to you. Uh, thank you councillor. Um, the, uh, the report that I've set out for you gives a, a, an update as to where we are with what was um, a surprise to the authority in regard to a planning a pre-planning application for a incinerator at Archer's Field, um, which is on the Burnt Mills Industrial site. So this consultation is not the normal statutory consultation that we would have via a planning application. This, uh, this consultation is as part of the Localism Act, which requires developers to consult with communities and stakeholders that would be impacted by the development. So set out here is um, in the report, is uh, what they intend to do, um, what they are looking uh, to create on the site. They already have one uh, waste site on uh, Archer's Field. This will be an additional site um, about 50 metres away from where they are. This will generate additional HGV um, uh, tr uh, journeys into the site, which, as you know, is... Um, subject to our current air quality ministerial direction, um, of which obviously we would be commenting on that and hopefully the planning application will be detailing uh, what uh, they will be doing to mitigate that. 
So um, this is, as I say, the first stage in uh, consultation for us to be able to reflect back um, with our views, um, but we've got a short time scale. So as part of the recommendations, um, obviously it would be useful if I could be delegated to respond in consultation uh, with the leader and the chairman of neighbourhoods and public spaces. Um, but also that uh, we'll take your comments now on your views that we can incorporate into that. And I'm sure we will share um, the response to that with all members. I'm happy to take any points. Thank you, Paul. Uh, so before I, I bring uh, other members in, um, I, I, I do think it's worth just reiterating some of these points. And I think there is a, an exercise that we do need to, to undertake to, to really get to grips with the facts about this. Um, so it is alarming to me um, that the local Conservative Party uh, were informed and had a petition set up and online before Essex County Council officers seemingly had the decency to inform Basildon Council officers of what is a sizable uh, development in our borough. Uh, and so when I uh, have asked officers why that has happened um, or why we didn't know about it, it was uh, due to the sequencing of events from the County Council. So uh, I would like the Chief Executive uh, of our council to be writing to Gavin Jones to be asking him how that happened and why that happened when something that is so seismic for Basildon uh, is being used for party political purposes by a county hall. I don't think that that is right and I don't think that's acceptable. Uh, and I'd like some answers from Gavin Jones uh, on that. Secondly, I think we also need to understand from colleagues at Essex County Council, uh, when they were first aware uh, of Clearway's uh, views that they were going to come forward with the development of a waste plant, was this just as out of the blue to the County Council as it was to us uh, just a couple of weeks ago or were meetings taking place between Clearway and Essex County Council for some considerable time because in the last six months I have sat in three or four meetings with the leader of Essex County Council uh, with uh, a number of Essex County Council officials and with ministers from the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs and not once, not once have they mentioned that there was the prospect of a waste plant with all of the additional traffic and high emission vehicles that may need, may need to move towards that site, passing through the Neverton Junction uh, of uh, the A127, which, as we know, is at the heart of the problem when it comes to air quality and the potential for a charging clean air zone, a congestion charge. So I, I think we have to understand why uh, the people of Basildon, why DEFRA, why others potentially have been kept in the dark about something that has been coming down the tracks for some considerable time. So again, uh, I think in Scott's uh, letter, because we are not going to uh, play politics with this, we want the facts of this case. When Scott writes to the Chief Executive of Essex County Council, we need to understand how many times Essex County Council officers have met with Clearway to understand what their thinking was, to understand what their proposals were, when it was first muted that there would be a waste plant in the Basildon Borough. The next thing to consider, in my view, is that the questionnaire, uh, I have received lots of feedback over the weekend from uh, residents, in uh, particularly in, in my patch of Pitsy, uh, who are outraged at the questionnaire uh, is predominantly asking uh, supportive questions uh, for the development. Uh, it is a very loaded piece of uh, consultation propaganda, um, which is, is not giving uh, the people of Pitsy uh, an opportunity to say very clearly that they are against this. Uh, I think we also need a view on this from public health. I know that public health are uh, under enormous pressure at the moment because of COVID uh, and their response to it. But I am, would be very interested uh, in the views of the Director of Public Health uh, about how uh, this uh, kind of facility in this location, so close to businesses, so close to residential estates, um, can have detrimental impacts. There are, 
are competing arguments uh, just for research online about, about the impact of these kind of places uh, on, uh, on pregnant women, for example. So we need to understand uh, what the public health risks are uh, to the people of Basildon. We already were, were frankly lied to and misled as a borough when it came to the Tovey waste plant that has been there. Odorless, uh, they said. You know, I think I live closer uh, to that waste plant than any other councillor, and I can tell you it is not odourless. Uh, on a warm day, you can smell what is coming out of the Tovey waste plant for miles. Uh, so it is not the look that we want in our borough. This is a clear case of being dumped on. And then finally, from me, I want to see that the, the committee, because this is the, the fundamental flaw in this outdated two-tier system of governance that we have in our borough, Basildon is not in control of its own destiny here. We are not in control of our own fate. The chairman of the committee that will respond to this when the application eventually goes in is a councillor from Tendery. There are councillors from Braintree, councillors from Colchester. Uh, the closest we have Councillor Hillier, but who knows if he's even still in the borough anymore. And then we have, of course, uh, councillors from Brentwood. That's about as close as it gets. And uh, they will all be looking at this planning application. And let's be really clear about it. They'll all be sitting there saying, there, but for the grace of God, go we. Uh, Basildon can be dumped on. Uh, and therefore Braintree gets away with it. Therefore Colchester or, or Chelmsford or Brentwood gets away with it. So I want those guys under social distancing and all of the uh, requirements that uh, we would have to put in place. I want them to visit uh, the site. I want them to understand fully the issues of the uh, air quality, where we're up to with the CAS, where we're up to with uh, what's going on there. And I want them to see for themselves what kind of pressure we are talking about on the Neverden Junction, what kind of pressure we're talking about on Courtauld Road. And then when they do come to host and to hold their committee meeting, that committee meeting must be held in Basildon. Uh, there must be an opportunity for the legions. And you know, we think the local plan was big back in 2018. There will be thousands of people who will want to come and line the the corridors of the sporting village or wherever it is that we have this meeting and they will want to make it very clear that yet again Essex County Council cannot be allowed to dump on Pitsy. They cannot be allowed to do it. We must make absolutely sure that they do not do it. That committee meeting must be in Basildon so that they can understand it because there is no way that a tendering councillor or a Chelmsford councillor or a Colchester councillor sitting in the confines of their own front room on a remote Zoom call is possibly going to understand the strength of feeling that exists in our borough about what is a god-awful uh, policy decision that they could take to put a waste plant in our borough. So let me say really, really clearly, we need answers from the County Council we need a chronology, we need the timeline, we need the facts, we need to understand how this impacts on what we are doing in respect of trying to stop the government from putting a congestion charge on the A127 and surrounding area. And we need to understand uh, what the, uh, the clear way the questionnaire is really getting at, I will bring members in in a moment. Uh, and then finally, we need to understand the process for how this decision is going to be taken. Uh, and how we can ensure that Basildon is given the, the biggest and the strongest case, or the people of Basildon are able to put the biggest and strongest case to those councillors here in our borough so that they fully understand the strength of feeling on this. I'll open this up now and I'm going to bring in Councillor Baggett. I know. Hey, Chairman, it's um, a bit disappointing that you said you're not going to play politics and yet that was pretty much playing politics throughout the entirety of the of the um, monologue. Um, I can tell you that from my point of view we were made aware from a Conservative Party point of view after um, Basildon Council had been informed. First information that we got with, with regard to being able to, to do anything about it was after um, County had uh, liaised with officers. Um, but you can spend your time um, 
digging into that as much as you want. I actually personally think our focus should be on how we go about preventing the plant and, and the processes and the response we do to the consultation rather than following your agenda of just trying to knock county council at, at, uh, at every uh, length. Um, I absolutely agree with the consultation. I've seen the consultation and we also have received um, a huge number uh, of individuals that say that the, the, the consultation that they're doing is fundamentally flawed. And that is maybe one of the things that we need to be responding as a council because it very much is almost, uh, um, do you want to save the environment? You know, you know, do you want to do this? And leading questions, which all, lead, which all lead down the one path, which is you must be accepting incineration, which uh, the public and which we certainly don't. Uh, I also think that because we're in the pandemic, and this is us being consistent with uh, what we've said with regard to the town centre consultation, that um, it is too short uh, that the consultation should be extended to allow those people, once lockdown measures are lifted, to, to be able to get uh, a better opportunity to know what's going on uh, and, and to get a better view so that that consultation can be uh, have a lot more weight uh, of what the public um, consider. The other thing that um, I would hope that we would uh, respond to um, from a council point of view is from the work that I have done on, on looking at the, the firm itself uh, and their experience, they are very much a waste management a waste management firm in the concept of transporting of waste. I can't find anywhere where they have any experience in the building of an incinerator and the management of an incinerator. And that deeply concerns me that Basildon yet again would be um, a guinea pig for a firm to try their hand at something else. They have facilities uh, elsewhere across the country uh, and I, I wouldn't be satisfied personally uh, that they have the experience or, or, or the ability. Councillor Callaghan is absolutely right. Uh, it is time, we, we have to draw a line in the sand. For over two decades now, Basildon and Pitsy have been the dumping ground for waste in Basildon. And in exactly the same way that we took the view uh, on the, the traveller issue that enough is enough, we've done our bit, it's time for other places to do theirs. It's exactly the same thing with regard to, to waste and where waste goes. Uh, enough is enough uh, and we should be opposing this at every level. Um, to reassure Councillor Callaghan, Councillor Hillier is in the, in the borough. I spoke to him only over the weekend. Um, so he is around uh, and he's still uh, carrying out his, his functions as a county councillor. So I know that you'll be able to sleep a lot easier at night uh, with that knowledge. Um, and, and finally, because you've mentioned the congestion charge a number of times, and as you well know, uh, it isn't a congestion charge, and you might say it's pedantic, but it was when it was being spoken about, it was a clear air zone uh, charge, not a congestion charge. I know you like your emotive stuff, but you also well know, because you were at exactly the same meeting that I was, when it was confirmed that that wasn't going to happen. So um, keep banging on about something which, which has been... Uh, put to one side is actually working in favour of folk wanting to build an incinerator. Because while you've taken your eye off the ball talking about congestion charges and county counts and everything else, um, slipping in under your nose is a firm trying to build an incinerator in the borough. And we should be united in saying that we want to oppose that uh, by every means necessary. Okay, before I bring uh, other members in, there's, there's an awful lot of... Uh, hyperbole and factual inaccuracies there. I, I don't believe I am playing politics. I'm merely pointing out uh, the issues that exist with the county council. Uh, and the third part of what I've asked for clarity on and I've asked for assurances on is in relation to the decision-making process and how we make sure that the decision-making process uh, is right. But uh, I have mentioned the clean air charging zone and I am intrigued because there is, um, there is a, an awful lot of, of talk that that somehow the threat of a congestion charge has been taken off the table. We have Mr. Brace on uh, the, the call here, who was also uh, at that meeting. Unless I have missed something, Paul, uh, I understand that the threat of a clean air charging zone is still very much on the table. Can you confirm or deny? Uh, yeah, we are still currently modelling with County the charging zone, as well as alongside that engineering 
as well as the softer measures. If the softer measures or the engineering does not deliver the reduction by the timeline and the charging zone does, then the government will have no other option but to force us to put a charging zone in. So that, that threat is still there if the other two do not deliver. That was what we got from Rebecca Powell. Absolutely. Yeah. Just to, and just to be clear on that, I met uh, on Friday with Client Earth, who are the uh, guys who are uh, prosecuting uh, the government in the courts uh, over this issue. And I had a conversation with them about uh, the issues that we face here in Basildon with regards to HGVs and our SMEs with the, the white vans, etc. So, uh, I, again, I just think this idea that I've taken my eye off the ball because the clean air charging zone slash congestion charge whichever way you want a tax on vehicles, a tax on Basildon's motorists uh, is, is off the table, uh, is a threat that simply, uh, it, it is nonsense. Uh, it is not off the table, it is still there. And at no point have the County Council raised the fact that there is the potential for a waste plant to be coming. I, I would be more than happy to assume all responsibility for this. I'm more than happy to say to Councillor Harrison with his remit, assume all responsibility for this. But we are still in this flawed two tier system of governance. And I cannot believe that when we are facing the prospect of the second waste plant in less than a decade being dumped on Basildon, uh, an incinerator in this case, uh, the, the centre for the Toby recycling plant in 2013, the second uh, in the space of a decade, there are still people in our borough, elected members who are defending the indefensible decision-making process that we have. Councillor Blake was next. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, on a couple of issues. Um, certainly, uh, the, the attack on county, I don't necessarily go, go, go along with, uh, and a lot of respect, because actually, this is a planning application that's going to be decided by county, but it isn't actually a county application. So I think we've got to be very conscious of that. Um, Couple of things I, I, I want to raise. I won't mention the, the congestion charge, although I actually, or, or clear air zone charge, although I understood it wasn't actually for cars, it was going to be for lawyers. We've got to that stage and possibly tactics, which we were fighting, but that's that's uh, neither here nor there. Um, I, I did raise with officers um, the concern that I had, or, or, or the policy I thought we had, which was that we were uh, an incinerator free zone, basically. Uh, and um, officers haven't been able to find that information. They have tried. I know they have tried. Uh, I spoke to uh, one of our members, who uh, it was Councillor Buckley, who's going back in that time. He said it was John Potter himself and Jeff Williams who signed it through Council for Authorisation uh, to, to send it off to um, uh, 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 government uh, and, and put the case. We can't find that. I've even I've even contacted. Uh, one the main campaigner uh, regarding that that site uh, uh, and asked them and they are fully aware that that did happen uh, but again you're talking 2001 or that sort of time so we can't find it but I'm surprised we can't find, I would have thought that would have been part of our um, uh, local plan that that was in there that we would have that in there so I'm quite surprised at that but we can't find it so but uh, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll keep digging. What I will agree with you 100% on, 100% on, is that if they, and it won't, I, where it happens, uh, I'll be surprised, that that planning committee must sit in, in, in the borough of Basildon. Uh, I, I, you know, how that's going to actually work, I know you could say uh, as a sporting village pack, well, it won't be packed because we won't be able to, you know, social distancing by that time still might not be uh, allowed to to do that. So we lack control. But I 100% agree that we should should be allowed to go along now. Uh, not just not just uh, members of the public, but uh, uh, councillors and anybody else who wants to have their two penneth worth. Because you know we 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 thought this could be a case going back in 2001 to whatever it was uh, that this could happen. Uh, that we could be forced to have an incinerator, a bit like Councillor Baggett, who Andrew said, you know, we, we, we've got our fair share of travellers, let other people have their fair share of travellers now, uh, and this seems to be the same. It's almost a case of, well, you've got a plant there already, one more won't hurt, uh, and that's not on, not acceptable um, uh, by the local residents. I question whether you actually live nearer to it than me, but uh, I'll, uh, I won't get the, uh, the, 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 the the birds out to see how much distance is. But um, at the end of the day, we're opposed to this, and I think we should be 100% united on this. Um, but I do think, and I do agree, that the planning committee should and must sit 
in, in the battle of Bower. Thank you. Councillor Harrison. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Can I say I'm a bit perturbed about how late it was that we found out about this application because I never saw the, pre the press release which was issued and which the candidate we were informed about because the first I really knew was when I was asked to appear on BBC Essex on a, in the morning uh, after we received the press release to talk about it with the owners or the applicant from Clear Away. Um, I'm very much concerned about this because we don't want it here in Basley, in our borough. The damage caused already by the Tovey plant being there, Councillor Callaghan is quite right about the odours that come from that particular plant. They do drift across my wall, the wick, and even as far as Shotgate on occasions. Now, Mr Brace, this is an incinerator. I disagree with that. It's two energy plants. It's very cleverly worded. It's two energy plants put together, which are in effect two incinerators, two chimneys, the ash has got to be produced and to go somewhere. There's no indication in this pre-application uh, information we've been given as to where that goes. It mentions the number of movements in the area, which are, to me, are too great. The air quality there is important and that's a very good reason why we should not support in any way this application. I'm concerned that the pre-application advice was sought in February and at the request of the applicant, they did not want any external consultation. Now, I would have thought that even on a pre-application, the county council planners would have spoken to Basel and Council's planning as, a, as our planners would, would, I, would I hope talk when we consult, the way we consult with parish councils, etc. I would have thought that would have taken place. The application is due to go in on probably January the 20th. It's a very short consultation period. Um, I'm a cynic. I'm a cynic. I believe the County Council will refuse this application and leave it to a planning inspector to approve. Exactly the same way they did last year or 18 months ago with the application for a waste disposal facility at Dollyman's Farm in Wick, in Shotgate, just the other side here of, uh, of our borough. And that went through after being not supported by the County Council on a planning inspector. I, I feel this will be the same. It's okay, say, having a meeting in Basildon. I look at County Council elections coming up next May. I see, um, I, I'm a cynic, honestly, um, that this could well be put off till after that, then or put off put before that, so we can have a wonderful refusal exercise in Basildon, as Councillor Callaghan and Councillor Blake want, and turning it down for popularity purposes. But I still feel this is likely to go ahead with a planning inspector giving the final approval, because I think the County Council could well bottle it. But we must make sure that we, and a total opposition, I did say when I was on, the, on BBC Essex, I thought then, even then, that all 42 councillors on Basel and Council would oppose this application. I know now that we will, from what Councillor Baggett has said, and I'm sure Councillor Smith is gonna come in and say exactly the same thing. I also share Councillor Baggett's view on whether this relatively small company, when you look at it, has the facility to do something like this, a 50 million pound exercise. I may be wrong, but I, didn't, I did not think, talking to the gentleman on the radio, that they sounded like, to be honest, they knew what they were doing. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor. Harrison, and I think that's a very interesting point that you make there around the pre-app. Um, I'll come to you in a moment, Councillor uh, Bagger. Uh, I think that's a very interesting right. point. The, here in Basildon, we, we've obviously been a lot more transparent and open when it comes to our pre-apps and made sure that all 42 members uh, have an opportunity to, to be there. Somebody somewhere has made a decision about no external consultation uh, back in uh, February. Um, and I'm just having a, a look back here to see uh, the, checking the diaries to see when we uh, were uh, at uh, 
uh, DEFRA talking to the minister to see whether or not uh, we have uh, got a situation where Essex have been completely upfront uh, with the government and we'll explore that further. But I think it's right. Somebody decided uh, that it was best uh, to not have a pre-app, to not inform Basildon and to not give our residents the opportunity to understand this in detail. And that's completely wrong. Councillor Smith, do you want to come in now? I'm conscious I can't actually Most see. Most certainly. Most yeah. certainly. Okay, Councillor Smith. I had the privilege of being an Essex County Councillor and they didn't even tell us until that press release was put out in the name of Councillor Tony Bolt. Didn't even speak to didn't even speak to council members. Now, if you read on this Essex Live News website, there's an article on there, and it says nearly 200,000 tonnes of Essex waste will be buried outside of culture. Now, when you go on to read the article, they're saying the Dutch government has imposed a 28 um, per tonne tax on the import of foreign waste for incineration. This is the stuff they want to burn at this waste plant if it's approved. So, and it all can, this waste, according to this article, is coming from the Soviet eco waste plant. This was just going to be this wonderful thing, allegedly, which it's never going to be, that was going to deal with all our domestic waste. It's all going to be green and clean. And now they can't even shift the pellets for incineration. So it sounds to me a bit like the case of the old lady who swallowed the fly. The county has made one big screw up, and now they want to make a monumental bigger screw up with this double incinerator. Um, and I mean, the secrecy of the county council on this issue is appalling. Uh, I can remember being at all council some months ago. And my group leader at county, all council, Chris Pond, said the solicitor wants to meet with us, something secret. So we all went up to our group room during the intermission at county, and he, got, he just read from a piece of paper, it was an update from the Soviet Waste Plant. And I said, oh, can I have that email? Nope. And I said, fuck copy? Nope. And that's how they treat their elected members with information. And then let's look, let's not forget the asbestos leak. They did not have the common courtesy to inform our officers. I saw an email that was sent to people in Colchester, but not to Basildon Council, informing that asbestos had gotten to the nearby atmosphere around the Toby Eco Waste Plant. And it was all marked confidential, blah, blah, blah. Well, no, it's people's safety in County all can whistle. So I gave it to Scott and got it out to the public domain so people could make checks. And that was our dust probes put at risk by Essex County Council. So to be perfectly honest, my view is Essex County Council have been working on this for quite some time. And I think this waste plant is to get them out of trouble. And if Basildon takes it in the neck, they'll do it. So I think, Mr Chairman, we need to fight this too for now. Kevin Brake said the meeting needs to be facilitated in the borough so residents subject to this lockdown and social distancing are able to attend. This is devastating for the borough. I mean, there are so many questions around that existing waste plant. County Council will not answer. I mean, let's not forget how much they sold the land for, shirt buttons, and how much they're renting it for each month for this company based in the Cayman Islands. And that county hall won't even tell you the name of the company in the Cayman Islands. What does that say? They cannot be trusted. We must fight this tooth and nail. And if I can also finally add, it might be worthwhile looking to find a really good barrister to fight these kids. Because there's a lot more that county will not take. Thank you, uh, Councillor Smith. I think that's a good point about looking for a good barrister. I'm not sure if anyone knows any, um, but we can uh, we can certainly explore that. Uh, Councillor <laughs> Bagger uh, indicated that he wanted to come back in. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I, I'm, I've got to say... Um, it's, it's highly rare that I, I disagree with Councillor Harrison, um, but on, on the one thing he said, I do, and maybe just because I'm a glass half full guy. If you take the view that Essex County Council refuse it, therefore it's going to go through by the planning inspectorate, therefore what's the point? Um, then you could argue, well, they might as well accept it because it's going to go through for them. And, and that then goes that if we're a unitary, if we refused it, it would go through on the planning inspectorate. And I think taking the view that it doesn't matter what you do, you're going to get the same result is is uh, just a tad defeatist really um and i think that this is twofold first of all we have the phase that they're going through which is the consultation which the the company itself needs to know uh, and be very clear about the depth of feeling 
from residents. And then if that fails, then you've got the, the, the second attack, which is when it goes to planning. And, and, and on the first, and um, if, if Councillor Callahan has already done it, then fair play. Um, has Councillor Callahan, in his capacity as leader, written to the company um, expressing the views of himself as leader uh, and, and, and the residents? I mean, we, you, you, you did it with the Range Sports Direct. I, I would hope that if you, if you haven't already done it, that it is something you would consider because it is extra weight on their view about the strength of feeling. Thank you, uh, Councillor Baggett. Let me deal with a couple of those points before I bring Councillor Harrison back in to, to respond uh, there. Firstly, let, let's just be really, really clear here. If Basildon Council was a unitary authority, we would not be building an incinerator to burn the waste of 1.5 million people across Essex. So let, let's just put that into context. What That is what the people of Basildon are being asked to do, whether it is uh, because it's a private company or not, uh, waste disposal is the responsibility of uh, unitary or upper tier authorities. Uh, and therefore we would not be here in Basildon building an incinerator to take the waste of 1.5 million people in the County of Essex, which is what in essence we would be being asked to do. So let's not try and absolve uh, the county of all responsibility. Yes, it might be a private developer who's coming forward with the application, but it serves the purpose uh, that county need to dispose of that waste. Uh, and they are choosing, uh, if they uh, go forward and accept this uh, planning application, to do that in the borough of Basildon. Um, and I think that that's totally wrong. Uh, following this meeting, I will be making it very clear uh, to uh, clear away around what uh, needs to happen and around the fact that their questionnaire is wrong. It is right that uh, I wait until we come to this committee and I was determined, I didn't have to do this. I didn't have to bring this uh, to committee. We could have just cracked on and done this ourselves, but I thought it was uh, worthwhile getting uh, the uh, comments and thoughts of all members so that I can be very clear that when I write in my capacity as leader of the council, I'm doing it on behalf of all 42 members who are behind uh, the view that we don't want this to happen. Um, and I've, as I said before, I'm often accused by the opposition uh, of just uh, exceeding the limits of my powers as they are uh, subscribed in the constitution. And then here I am uh, bringing uh, in the most open and transparent way I can uh, a report to this committee so that we can discuss this, debate it, and I can uh, use the, the views of all members across uh, all political parties, across all groups, uh, in the response that I give to them. And that is exactly what I'll do because that's how uh, I lead the council. Uh, Councillor Harrison, you wanted to come back in. Yep. Chairman. Councillor uh, I wasn't inferring that that's the best way forward. What I was suggesting was the county had done that previously. And that concerns me, they do that previously. Now, on the question of pre-application advice, that's quite expensive for an applicant. And a large development of 50 million pound, I'm not sure what the cost would be, but I'm sure uh, one of the officers would outline that because a lot of things take place and conversations take place between applicants. First of all, basically, what are the chances of us doing this before they want to go down the big expense of pre-application advice? I'm only suggesting my theory is the county council have probably given their little nod to that company. Yes, you've got a good chance here. Otherwise, I don't think they would have gone down the road of spending a fortune on pre-application advice. They would have probably done something different just to extend their existing business, which already has a planning consent. That's my view. I might be wrong. I might be totally out of order, but that's, what, that's how I feel about it. I'm happy. And actually, I have made my comments known on BBC Essex. And I'm happy because waste strategy is important to this council. And we've, we've got a big, big thing to look at in the coming months and years ahead. So that is important that I'm happy with Councillor Callaghan to pen a letter to the owners of Clear Away pointing out our position. We don't want them there. There are problems in this area and we don't want them. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Smith, do you want to come back in or? No, you know me, I'll make my point and leave it at that. Okay. All right. So the recommendations are on the supplementary agenda 
uh, item that has been uh, issued uh, to members. I'm going to take the recommendations uh, together uh, and I'm going to ask Councillor Smith, how do you vote? In favour of the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Baggett. Wholeheartedly in favour. Councillor Blake. In favour. And I vote in favour. So the uh, recommendations are carried unanimously. Uh, thank you uh, to Paul Brace. Thank you, members, uh, for for your uh, attendance and your uh, contributions today. I'm going to ask that members just hang fire uh, after we uh, finish this meeting, but uh, we have another one of these in the diary if needs be uh, for a couple of weeks time anyway. Um, and so thank you to everyone and anybody who has been watching and to officers who uh, no longer uh, need to be here. Thank you all. We can now finish the meeting. Hold on, Gavin, Gavin. Sorry, go on, Councillor Smith. Yeah. So is the meeting te technically finished and we're just seeing if there's any points we want to add on to the next meeting at that stage? Yeah, we're just going